cannot give you back your homes or restore your dead to life, but perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. We talk a lot about the history, lore, and theories that surround the world of Ice and Fire. For every line of George R. R. Martin's Ice and Fire books, and every quick scene in the HBO adaptation, there are at least a dozen theories associated with them. Some are good, and some are just hilarious to think about. I would have to argue that the reason this series is so amazing is due to its powerful foreshadowing and misdirection that fools the audience right up until the point where the secrets are unveiled. With that being said, we are going to talk about three of the biggest theories that fans want to believe are true and will one day be revealed. So if you aren't caught up with everything, this will definitely have spoilers. Make sure you protect yourself and click off the video. Alright, let's get into it. Lord Varys is a merman. I know, just the sound of it is crazy, but let me explain. In the books and the show, Varys moves very quietly and wears very long robes, which some people believe is because he glides on the ground. He does have feet in the show, so I wouldn't take the gliding theory as solid evidence, but it's nonetheless a good add-on. Another thing is, Varys apparently knows all the secret passages in the Red Keep, and he was also seen traveling through the dungeons under King's Landing with Illyrio Mopatis when Arya was chasing cats for her sword training. In the books, the area is hard to access and has many waterways surrounding it. Fans believe Varys may use his merman abilities to move around so secretly. And while I'm adding on to merfolk attributes, do these creatures need a real bed to sleep on? I wouldn't think so, and maybe that is why Varys doesn't have a proper bed in his living quarters. That always had me wondering. Oh, and Tyrion and Varys speak about his chance of survival if he was thrown overboard a ship. Varys confidently tells Tyrion that he would be surprised at the result. Merfolk are an often reported sighting in Game of Thrones. Sailors, as well as fishermen, swear the sea creatures do in fact exist. The question is, do you believe they exist? Sirio Farrell is alive. This is the theory that everyone has wanted to prove true forever. Many fans believe that Sirio Farrell is truly alive and was portrayed by the same faceless man who uses Jack and Hagar's persona. Although the showrunners have said that Sirio is in fact dead, there just seems to be too many connections the audience cannot get past like the fact that both Sirio and Jacken come from Bravos, and they both took the responsibility of protecting Arya. Sirio talks a lot about the God of Death, or the Miniface God, whom Jacken serves as well. Right after the scene where we expect Sirio dies while fighting Sir Marin Trant, we soon see the caged wagon with prisoners going to the wall. It turns out that Jacken Hagar is one of those prisoners. Now how did Jacken get captured anyway? Must have been on purpose. We also know that faceless men train hard so that they can take over the persona of different people. Sometimes you will find a faceless man using the persona of someone to get closer to nobles or maybe even royalty. So when we find out that Sirio Farrell was the first Sword of Bravos, a high-ranking individual in Bravosi government, it would make sense that a faceless man would favor a spot like that to oversee the doings of higher ups and ensure their actions fall in line with the order of the Miniface God. Maybe a faceless man took the real Sirio Farrell's life and portrayed the first sword of Bravos for the furtherance of the house in black and white. Now I know what you're saying, Sirio Farrell had to have died in King's Landing because of all of the soldiers with the real swords, including Sir Marin Trant, opposing Sirio when he only held a wooden training sword. You would be right, that's the obvious answer. However, he was never seen being killed, and Marin Trant did indeed survive, but that's not to say Sirio couldn't have incapacitated him. Plus, telling Arya to run away would have allowed Sirio to take care of business without Arya thinking he survived. This could have let him easily turn into Jacken and continue his growing relationship with the young Lady Stark. Plus, the Hound laughed at Arya when she said Marin Trant killed the world's best swordsman, alluding to the fact that Sir Marin wasn't that great of a swordsman. Also, listen to Jacken's response when Arya talks about Sirio. Watch his slight smile. My dancing master was from Bravos. To be a dancing master is a special thing, but to be a faceless man, that is something else entirely. If you want more info, check out my first video that I ever made. It's got a lot of video clips in there to help support everything I've been talking about. 
Peter Baelish caused everything. It's always fun to question how all of this started. Like, out of the thousands of years this world has been around, how everything could be falling apart right at this moment in time. Could it really all stem from the love affair between Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark that started Robert's Rebellion and then led to all the major houses killing one another? Could this all have started from a group of unplanned chaotic events, or is it possible that this chain of events was ignited from one solely responsible individual? Well, that's what a large number of fans believe, and they believe Peter Baelish was the one who set everything off. Think about this, when Littlefinger was young, he grew up alongside Catelyn and Lysa Tully. Catelyn was Peter's obsession, and he even challenged Brandon Stark for her love. Brandon Stark fought him and nearly killed Peter. Brandon Stark being Eddard's older brother and the one who was meant to marry Catelyn originally. When the Starks were on their way to the Riverlands for the wedding, Brandon and Rickard Stark received word of Lyanna's alleged kidnapping, and instead of going through with the wedding, they rode to King's Landing to demand justice from the Mad King. Instead of getting their way, the two Starks were taken prisoner and subsequently killed with wildfire. Robert's rebellion started soon after, and to ensure an alliance with House Tully, Ned Stark, the new Lord of Winterfell, married Catelyn, and Lord John Arryn married Lysa. Some think it might have been Peter Baelish who falsely spread the word of Lyanna's kidnapping out of jealousy, knowing that the Starks would quickly drop the wedding of Catelyn Brandon. From there, Peter learned that his words were much more powerful than any strength in combat that he could ever attain. Ever since then, Littlefinger has been able to work his way to the top and pull the strings under the guise of his fake loyalties. It would be insane if it was ever revealed that Littlefinger was the main reason everything ended up the way it did. Alright everyone, I hope you enjoyed this. It's always really entertaining to go back and discuss the popular theories in the Game of Thrones universe. Let me know your all-time favorite theories, whether they are very likely true or obviously insane. As always, have a great day everyone, take care, and I'll see you tomorrow.